Just about a week ago, I commented on Tucker Carlson and how he was being dragged by leftists over his take on the rioting taking place across this country. He was criticizing celebrities for paying the bail for protesters and rioters. I don't know exactly how they differentiate between who gets bailed out for what crime. So yeah, probably some rioters got bailed out, probably some protesters. And I said it was only a matter of time before they come for Tucker Carlson like they have in the past, and he starts to lose more advertisers. Well, here we are. According to Deadline, Tucker Carlson's Fox News show loses Disney and other advertisers over George Floyd killing and Black Lives Matter POV. I don't know necessarily if he is more susceptible than I am to having woke outrage shut him down. He's got Fox News behind him, but Fox News needs to make money and they pay Tucker Carlson millions of dollars. If he can't get any sponsors for his show, then what are they going to do? Eventually, I I can only imagine they will end it. That's why in my personal opinion, I kind of lean towards I think Tucker Carlson is not long for this world. Although you have Hannity and Laura Ingram, who may be more, I mean, worse from the left's perspective, they love to go after Tucker Carlson, probably because Tucker is often right. Hannity and and Ingram can be a bit bombastic, and their opinions, in my opinion, are often predictable. Tucker Carlson actually is ahead of the curve, and he actually has some some pretty good thoughts on everything that's going on, though I don't completely agree with everything he says. I think they're going to do everything in their power to try and destroy him, and it's working. But let me tell you something. The culture revolution and the banning of ideas isn't just about Tucker. He's just a big target because he is principal opposition for these lunatics as am I. So I can only assume at a certain point they'll come for me as well. And they've probably been trying. They'll probably make fake recordings and fake tweets and stuff like that and do what they do what they normally do. But they're also coming for, have you guessed it yet? Paw Patrol, apparently, because Paw Patrol depicts a dog who happens to be a cop. And that can't be allowed because pro-police propaganda must be shut down. Now, I know these are kind of different stories, but they're a little similar. The reason I bring them up is it's not really about Tucker Carlson. It's about shutting down dissent. Tucker gets uh, in, Tucker is in the front of the line because not only is he a dissenting voice showing an alternative picture of uh, what's going on, but he directly opposes them. So they got to get rid of him first by any means necessary. I wouldn't be surprised if Fox does, but Fox does have Fox Nation, which is a subscription based service, which perhaps can make sure Tucker survives. Because Tucker, I believe, is now their most popular show. They don't want to lose that. They would lose a lot of their, their subscribers. One thing we've seen, however, and I want to, I'll, I'll, we'll get to this story. We saw that, that General What's-His-Face come out and apologize for being in that photo with Trump. I tell you what, man, ranks are forming. People are starting to hedge their bets. Which side are you on and who do you think will win? I present to you the culture war wager. I've brought it up before, but before I read this, let me just tell it to you again. If you are on the left and the left wins, you're fine. If you are on the right and the left wins, you are in serious trouble. If you are on the right and the right wins, you're fine. And if you were on the left and the right wins, you are fine. I I hope I got that right. Anyway, the point is, if you map out the the quadrants, if you do a graph of where you are uh, most likely to be safe, it's to be a leftist. Why? Well, if civil libertarians win, you're still allowed to be a leftist. If the left wins and you're a leftist, you're fine. But if you're conservative and the conservatives win, you're fine. If you're conservative and the left wins, they come for you and they will destroy you. So now we are seeing many, many people rush to apologize, to bend the knee and quite literally wash the feet of these activists. Well, I'm not going to do it. Whatever. Tucker might get banned. I might get banned. Whatever, man. If it happens, it happens. If you don't stand up for what you believe in, you deserve what, what happens to you. So if the good people of this country refuse to speak up and say anything, they refuse to stand up and fight for what they believe in, well, then their rights will be erased and it's what, they, it's what they've earned. You, you can't just assume you will always be free and everything will be given to you. No, you have to defend it. Let's read this story from Deadline. Updated with an ABC statement, they say Tucker Carlson may have one of the most watched shows on cable news, but the Fox News channel host is losing advertisers again. Whereas in 2018, over 20 companies yanked their ads after Tucker Carlson obtusely proclaimed that the undocumented made America poorer and dirtier and more divided. This time, the exits are over the host's stance on the death of George Floyd and the nationwide protests that followed against police uh, violence and racism. Both Disney and T-Mobile 
have cut ties with the primetime Tucker Carlson tonight over the host's polarizing point of view on the Black Lives Matter movement and the desire for justice and equality in America many of its members advocate. Along with Papa John's and Smile Direct Club, the media giant and the telecommunications brand faced a backlash in recent days for their association with Carlson and his belief that the well-attended protests were Black Lives Matter riots. Many of them were peaceful protests. Many of the peaceful protesters staged rather cool uh, events. I say cool as in like they showed up, they did this big performative thing. Many people got on their, you know, laid on their stomach, put their hands behind their back, chanted, and they left. And I, look, I don't care if you don't like the ideology because I'm certainly critical of it. I'm absolutely supportive of the right of Americans to protest. And that's something I think needs to be defended at all costs. The unfortunate reality is that it presents people like me, civil libertarians with a disadvantage, that we're willing to grant the violent authoritarians the right to speak because we believe in free expression. They won't do the same. So in the end, you have these protesters that go out and do a fine protest, speaking up for what they believe in, many peaceful ones. And that's fine, even though they are flaunting COVID-19. And therein lies the serious conundrum. I support the right of people to protest the lockdown. I support the right of the people to protest for Black Lives Matter. But a lot of the activists and high profile personalities supporting Black Lives Matter did not extend the same rights to those who wanted to protest the lockdown. Take a look at CNN, for instance. They were just absolutely smearing peaceful protesters until it was their ideology. And that's what's dangerous. I believe in equality under the law. They don't. So that's what you'll get. And as they start to gain ground, anyone who dare oppose them will be stripped of their rights to free speech. And all that really matters is, look, you know, polls have come out showing that approval for Black Lives Matter is skyrocketing among the entire country. Net uh, unfavorability is in the 30 percent, depending on which poll you look at. OK, you know what, man? Democracy, I guess. I'll keep standing up for what I believe in. And if I'm the last one standing there defending the right to, uh, to free speech, so be it. If no one else wants it, then you don't deserve it. So they go on to say, Fox News did not respond. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 another or put another way. Wait, what, what just happened? Did it just jump? Yeah. OK, here we go. Or put another way, putting money in Rupert Murdoch's corporate pocket was not a branding position Disney or T-Mobile wanted to be in at this moment in America. Fox News did not respond to requests for comment tonight on the ad exits. Well, having run ads about 29 times this year on the much watched uh, Fox News channel, Disney also did not respond to a request for comment on the issue. However, sources tell Deadline that the ads for ABC shows on Tucker Carlson were placed in error by third parties. The ads will not be running anymore with no more placements by the Bob Chapek led House of Mouse expected on uh, Carlson anytime soon. They say update. The ABC advertisements were placed on the show without our knowledge by third party media buyers who are unaware that we do not advertise on the show. And they have now been notified not to place any further ads, according to an ABC spokesperson. We also realize that now more than ever is the time for all of us to further strengthen our commitment to diversity and inclusion everywhere. CEO Chapik, along with Executive Chairman Bob Iger and SVP and Chief Diversity Officer LaTondra Newton, told Disney staff in a May 30 note, Five days after Floyd was killed in the street by now, we, we get it. I, I love how they just keep always doing that. We know what's going on, man. We intend to keep the conversation going, not just today, but for as long as it takes to bring about real change. That's a stark contrast, to put it mildly, to Carlson's earlier encapsulations of the past two weeks in America. Last week, the host told his primarily conservative audience that they weren't required to be upset about Floyd's Memorial Day death in broad daylight on the street by cops. This is the same host who last summer pronounced white supremacy a hoax that should be put on the conspiracy theory shelf. Now, Tucker Carlson's point on the white supremacy issue is that you constantly hear about this dangerous threat from white supremacists, of which there is a microscopic amount of these people in this country. Where are they and what are they doing? There have been a few high profile incidents, and I think Tucker Carlson would be wise to plan his words better. Obviously, they're coming for you. You got to be careful about how you phrase things. But hey, man, he can say what he wants to say and he has a right to say it. I think he has a point to be made about the idea of a hoax. I think it's more of a hysteria that you have, I think, according to the Anti-Defamation League, around 10 or 11,000 white supremacists in this country. And that's, I think, you know, out of 333 million, I think is a very, very small number. We've seen Vox.com try to inflate this, arguing that millions of people support this kind of thinking, which is just absurd because you can't read minds. So when you have a media apparatus that continually tells you that white supremacy is a real threat 
I have to wonder why they're saying it. It's media hysteria. Though I do think there is a very serious threat from fringe ideologues, which attract them. We recently saw in response to Trump's declaration that he was going to brand uh, Antifa, a terror organization, a hashtag to brand the Klan, a terror organization. There, 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 there really is no Klan. <laughs> you know what I mean? The issue is, I absolutely don't care if they label the Klan a terrorist organization. I really, really don't. But it's kind of absurd when you have active Antifa cells marching around in streets, bashing people. They're in the press constantly because of what's happening. The president brings them up and they're like, but what about the Klan? Yeah, what about them? I don't know where they are. What are they doing? When was the last time you saw a Klan rally marching through the street? The 90s, I guess. Listen, man, if you want to label them terrorists too, I really don't care. Go for it. They're crazy people as far as I'm concerned. And they have a horrifying history as well. Antifa, though, has international ties and they, and, they, and they do organize, they do combat trainings, they have buildings, they have an ideology, they have funding, and they try to use this propaganda that they're not really an organization. Sure, man, just because they're decentralized doesn't mean they don't coordinate. It's part of their strategy to make sure there's no visible leaders, but there are leaders that you can name. I'm not going to name them now. But it's funny when they say, who do I talk to? Who do I sign up with? Uh, dude, are you kidding? You can Google search this. You will see who has been sued and who has been organizing and who's in charge of these things. It's absurd. But anyway, the point is, it's, it's, it's ridiculous that they try and claim that Antifa isn't doing anything, but it's propaganda. It's part, of, it's part of the game they play. And guess what, man? As long as Americans are terrified and hiding, uh, then you're going to lose. But you know what? There's another reality. Maybe they're just winning because people do like it. I don't necessarily believe it, because when you look at a lot of the actual data tracking political ideology, these people make up a fringe of the fringe. Like on Twitter, for instance, it's 2% of the country that's active on Twitter. And of that, like, you know, what is it? 1.1% might actually be progressive activists. That tiny fraction of this country is dictating policy and cultural development. That's why I don't believe it. You also look at how Donald Trump won. There are a lot of people who voted against him, for sure. And that may be the majority of people in this country don't like him. And maybe that's going to happen. Maybe Trump will absolutely lose. I think if you are arrogant and think he's going to win, yeah, you'll be surprised come November. Now, ultimately, I don't think voting is going to matter, though, because if you take a look at the political landscape, we have Joe Biden. Nobody likes him. You have Donald Trump, ardent supporters, a lot of people with Trump derangement syndrome, and the far left who absolutely rejects Joe Biden. So what's going to happen if Trump wins? then the left goes insane because they don't like, you know, Trump. If Biden wins, the left goes insane and the right goes insane. So I don't I don't know what you can expect, man. But I'll tell you this right now. What we are seeing in terms of the culture revolution is rapidly expanding. It's expanding to the point where we have such absurdities like the banning of Paul Paw Patrol now being in the New York Times. You've got the the autonomous zone in Seattle and people are just posting lies about it to defend it and support it, overt propaganda, and the media is defending it. You don't have to act like they're a bunch of demons, but you don't got to act like they're the, the saving grace of Seattle, the liberation front or something. I think I, I think my take on it was was rather fair that it looks like Occupy Wall Street. It's probably going to be nothing. It'll dwindle, but we'll see. It could be the start of something bigger. Take a look at this story. Let's talk about culture revolution. The protests come for Paw Patrol. This should show you the sheer absurdity of what's happening. A backlash is mounting against depictions of good cops on television and in the street. The New York Times reports, Paw Patrol is a children's cartoon about a squad of canine helpers. It is basically a pretense for placing household pets in a variety of cool trucks. The team includes Marshall, a firefighting Dalmatian, Rubble, a bulldog construction worker, and Chase, a German shepherd who is also a cop. In the world of Paw Patrol, Chase is drawn to be a very good boy who barks stuff like Chase is on the case and all in a police pup's day as he rescues kittens in his tricked out SUV. But last week, when the show's official Twitter account put out a bland call for black voices to be heard, commentators, commenters came after Chase, euthanize the police dog, they said, defund the Paw Patrol. All dogs go to heaven except the class traitors in the Paw Patrol. It's a joke, but it's also not. As the protest against racist police violence entered the third week, the charges are mounting against fictional cops too. Even big hearted cartoon police dogs, or maybe especially big hearted cartoon police dogs are on notice. The effort to publicize police brutality also means banishing the good cop archetype, which reigns on both television and in viral videos of the protests themselves. Paw Patrol seems harmless enough. And that's the point. The movement rests on understanding that cops do plenty of harm. You know, 
I'm a big fan of the Law and Order shows. They're a lot of fun. I, I really liked watching Law and Order SVU because I thought they had some uh, some good some good characters. But I got to be honest with you, man. Stabler on Law and Order SVU was not a good cop. He was a bad cop who routinely beat up suspects. And I think sometimes they turned out to be innocent. So I don't think that when you watch shows, the, the archetype is that all cops are good. They actually present this in the shows, though they do often present the cops as good guys. I think there is a subtle nuance in some of these depictions of cops. Now, admittedly, Paw Patrol is overtly positive in terms of their depiction of a fictionalized 3D animated dog who saves kittens. But sure, how should we function? Should we op operate as though we believe we're living under an occupied force or should the police be a part of our community? I think we are getting a dramatic false narrative of what the police really are. Now, listen, man, I think a lot of people don't like cops. I think when people are driving their cars, they see a cop, they get on edge and they don't want to be pulled over because cops negatively impact your life more often than they positively impact your life. This is just a sad reality. And I'm not saying that all cops are bad or anything like that, but, but think about it. The average interaction I would imagine with somebody somebody's having is getting a citation or a warning or being pulled over and people don't like that. They think when they see a cop, they're like, something bad will happen to me. And that's unfortunate. There have been calls to remove police from traffic policing so that, you know, traffic law will be enforced in some other way, but maybe that will reduce the amount of negative interactions people have with police. And by negative, I don't mean cops did anything wrong. I mean, people leave upset and angry that they encountered the police. People should leave encounters with the police happy and feeling good. When you call for a fire department, the likelihood that you're going to have a negative experience is rather low. The fire department comes and helps you or an ambulance, for instance. But cops have to enforce the law and people don't like being held to account when they do things wrong. And sometimes cops get these things wrong. I've been falsely arrested and I've been falsely given tickets and the cops didn't do anything for me. And I, I firmly believe the cop who gave me a ticket knew full well he was forging this document and lying about what really happened. And it resulted in me getting a suspended license. That happened to me. It resulted in me getting arrested for it. And it was horrible. It absolutely was. And I'm not stupid enough to think that we can go without having police or that all cops are bad. Just too many. And that's why I believe reform is a good thing. But do I think we should start purging people from television and culture, banning certain shows? Absolutely not. It doesn't matter what I think. In fact, it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what even the progressives think. I can talk to any one of my progressive friends and say, isn't this crazy? And they say, they say, yes, it is. I say, don't you think it's nuts they're going to ban this police dog? Yes, it is. But the dominoes have fallen over. There is now a view inside the minds of the people working these com companies that they must do this or else. It's, it's uh, you know, it's a snowball. It's an avalanche. It's an absolute avalanche. And as this falls, certainly the snowflakes don't blame themselves for it. And they say, I never wanted this. It doesn't matter. You all piled up and now the snowball is rolling down the hill and it's getting bigger and it's moving faster and faster. And at a certain point, there's nothing you can do about it. Because if you turn on the mob, they'll turn on you. So what's going to happen? Well, Tucker Carlson's first in line for obvious reasons. He opposes them. He presents an alternate worldview and they don't like that. Tucker's, Tucker's going to have to go. Shortly after, you're going to start seeing a purge of a lot of personalities on YouTube, of which I am included. Eventually, they will say free thinkers like Tim or counter, uh, you know, contrarians like Tim won't be allowed to present their opinions and tell us what's going on. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. And most people, I'd imagine, are just sitting around saying, you know, well, I'm going to take care of me and my own. And then the crazies take over. The best example of what's happening and the best warning is the Chaz the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. Apparently, some guy has taken over because he's got a group of uh, people who follow him, a crew. They've declared on camera that they're the police now. They're doing exactly what you'd expect police to do. And people have shown up with guns. But don't worry, they're there for your safety. That's actually what they said in the video. It's kind of hilarious how instead of creating an autonomous zone with no leaders and no cops, they just created a parallel society that does the exact same things. What I find funny is that during Occupy Wall Street, they had the same problem. And I was talking to some of the organizers and they said they think the problem is that everyone, including themselves, have only ever known this way of life. And so they don't know how to deal with these problems in any other way. So when problems arise, the natural tendency is to default to a policing system. Sure, fine, whatever. Well, maybe you should come up with a strategy for how you run these things before you implement them. Otherwise, a, quote, warlord will take over. That's what they're going to do. 
If they succeed in their culture revolution and purge and outright uprising to institute their proletariat revolution or racial justice, they may destroy all of our institutions. Things may fall apart. The law may break. Policing may, may collapse. And it will take only a couple of days before the exact same system emerges. Only this time it will be completely disorganized and there will be no justice. Right now we're seeing in the chairs, this guy's walking up and just saying, stop or else, and then assaulting somebody. And no one can stop him. And that's what you can expect with lawlessness. They'll disband the police and say, we need to reimagine this. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you what's going to happen. My be- I-, I think the best bet is to get out of the cities. And you know what's funny about it? It's happening. Mortgage demand is up 13%. People are fleeing New York, Chicago, and San Francisco, probably Los Angeles too. Why? Because if there's no police and you're in a city and someone comes to your door and they say, what's yours is mine, what can you do about it? Nothing. There's no law and no one can stop them. At least if you're in the middle of nowhere, it's harder for them to get to your house and single you out. And maybe you'll be armed to protect yourself. I don't know to what degree this will happen, but seeing that general go on TV or whatever earlier and apologize for appearing next to Trump should be a, uh, a, a another warning sign to all of you. A red flag, I would say. Why would this person draw that line? Why would all of these former generals come out and condemn Trump? Maybe it's because they're trying to hedge their bets that Trump loses or something bad happens, and they don't want to be the target of the outrage mob that comes with pitchforks. Well, that's because they're pathetic, whatever. I mean, maybe they're right. They can criticize Trump. That's fine. But stand up for what you believe in. Otherwise, why would anyone follow you? I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. at timcast.net, and I will see you all then.